And that threat and fear still hangs over the UK of an enemy within. This week, the US and France have specifically warned their citizens to avoid public transport and public spaces here. They say another attack is highly likely. Radicalized Muslims from across Europe are still heading to terrorist training camps to plot attacks on their own countries. An Al-Qaeda video from earlier this summer showing German-speaking militants training for jihad in Pakistan. Another group of Germans was killed by a US drone yesterday, part of an attempt to disrupt an Al-Qaeda plot against Europe. Among the suspected plotters were two brothers, both British, one of whom is believed to have been killed in the drone attacks. Why is it our very own citizens want to kill us? Could it be partly our own fault? The Home Secretary this week accused the previous government of being too soft on extremists. They engaged with extremists and they failed to encourage people to integrate into and participate in our society. But the perception of Islamophobia has made many in the Muslim community feel isolated and rejected. Many Muslims have been enraged by the deaths of fellow believers in wars in Afghanistan and Iraq. And the former head of MI5 says there is a direct link between the conflict and extremism. Our involvement in Iraq um, radicalized, for want of a better word, but um, a whole generation of young people who saw our involvement in Iraq on top of our involvement in Afghanistan as being an attack on Islam. But most would say acts of terrorism are inexcusable and Britain's other minority communities have faced similar challenges without turning to terrorism. Polls have repeatedly shown a worrying level of sympathy for extremism in a small minority of the Muslim community. And there are concerns that some Muslims are too tolerant of radical views being preached in mosques, often to vulnerable young men. In order to avoid a repeat of 7-7, do we first need to ask who is to blame for the few young British Muslims who see killing their fellow citizens as an acceptable thing to do? What do you think? Does the blame for the outrage of Islamic terrorism lie squarely at the doors of deluded extremists? Or could we be partly to blame? If you have a webcam, go to our website now and click on the video call link. You can make your point by phone, by text, by email or online. The details are on the screen. Ajmal, are we? It does lie in the hands and at the doors of the deluded extremists, no doubt about it. But if the uh, former um, MI5 head is, um, our intelligence head is anything to go by, and also some of the reports as well as the, the suggestions that have come from many experts is anything to go by, it has a resonance and that is there is a systematic failure on our part to understand the impact of foreign policy, especially the misguided foreign policies. Iraq war has been a major problem including the f new leader of Labour Party acknowledging that um, and problems in Afghanistan the disproportionately or at least our silence in what's happening in, Af in Kashmir right now or the Palestinian Israeli conflict for years all of these exasperate I believe some of the political opinions but can I just go back to the point that we your uh, TV program or the small clip made about Islamic terrorism Please don't use that term. Islamic and terrorism are oxymorons. Someone who's Islamic is devout, godly. How would you describe it? A terrorism, criminals, idiots. That's what they are. But as they are using Islam so as say, their say, justification. Say those people who are using Islam or abusing Islam, it's not Islamic terrorism because they are contradictory. Islam is, in, in my view, I am, for example, I stood in the last parliamentary mm -hmm. election. Some of these idiots stopped me on the street and told me, why are you taking part in this election? If you take part in this election, you're participating within an Islamic system and therefore you are not even a Muslim yourself. That's well, what they you told threatened. me. Many times I receive uh, text messages on a regular basis threatening me. But I, What was the nature of the threat? Quite severe. But I tell you this, I have taken on in myself and many of my friends and I believe majority of the Muslims across the world have taken on this task, quite, quite hard task of saying, look, don't hijack Islam and not in my name. You be lunatic yourself. So we need to separate them and not give them oxygen and fuel and publicity. But do we need to understand the causes, Anne? We are not to blame for Islamist, which is political Islam, terrorism. In fact, I think far, as far as we are to blame is we've been far too tolerant of these dreadful people like Abu Qatada, 
uh, Abu Hamza. In fact, we slightly sort of ridiculed them as if they were little, uh, you know, comical creatures. They weren't, and they were. You very think dangerous. we're not hard enough? We were not hard enough on those sort of people. What do you say to the uh, MI, uh, MI6 or MI5? Well, well, I disagree with her. I disagree with her. You disagree uh, with her? Can, can I some just say? On, on no, I can just say. Islamist terrorism was basically born in 1928 with the Muslim Brotherhood, which you know about. They spent their time, to begin with, actually killing fellow Muslims whom they didn't believe uh, were, you know, good enough, and they bombed them, you know, cinemas and things like that. They inspired... Oh, by the way, they were Gamma Islam and the Muslim yeah, yeah. Brotherhood. No, 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 can no, I just no. say something Gamma Islam, very different. So, so we, we weren't at war in Iraq or Afghanistan when those planes were flown into the Twin Towers. Well, exactly. So to exactly. actually blame this, what, what yes. they are is a fascist, yes. faith-based death cult. Yes. And we should have no truck with them no. whatsoever. Absolutely. And, and when, when, you, when you've got people making these threats over like a few cartoons in Denmark, yeah. right, and you've got the, uh, you know, the, the Mohammed cartoons, and you've got Salman and Rushdie having to go and hide. We weren't in Iraq then, and no. we weren't in Afghanistan then. These people are absolute nut jobs. Meanwhile, and we should have I think no we all We all agree. We all agree that we are not to be blamed for it. No. There is a question that has been raised, which is an important one. Has any of our foreign policies contributed, even by a small amount? Yes. Towards radicalizing and I want to some no, people. I want radical. to ask that no, question. I don't think so. I, I, I don't think you're connected. I don't think no, you're they connected to on the grounds you know that. For writing yes. a book. So but that was not the time. They burnt down say? embassies for printing cartoons. Can and I, I, Anna and Ash, 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 I am going to come back to you in a moment, but there are plenty of people who want to take part in this debate. Sure. Tony Blair this week said that achieving a peace settlement would remove much of the poison which extremists use. Jonathan Hoffman joins us now, head of the Zionist Federation. Is it partly our fault that we haven't achieved that? Well, I think um, no and yes. What do I mean by that? Well, as Anne Leslie said, only Islamists are to blame for the existence of terrorism. I haven't yet heard anyone say that Hitler was a freedom fighter opposing the injustices of the Treaty of Versailles. As Anne said, Islamic terror can be traced back to the Muslim Brotherhood founded in 1928, so it predates Iraq. Yeah, but, but we the, are to blame. We are to blame for the spread of terror, and that's because we appease Islamists mm -hmm. instead of opposing them. For example, as Theresa May said, the Labour government had a programme called Prevent, preventing radical extremism, to give it its full title. But instead of combating extremists, it actually paid them mm -hmm. to do talks. And take Abdul Muttalab, the so-called underpants bomber, uh, who tried to bring down a plane over Detroit on Christmas Day. Uh, he was head of the Islamic Society at University College London. Three out of the last four heads of the Islamic Society have been indicted for terrorism offences. Now, the college commissioned a report on him which was published last week. It was a joke. It was pathetic. It didn't even mention any of the speakers invited by the Islamic Society while Abdul Muttalab was a student at UCL, and they were included many extremists. Dawood Abdullah, for example. Only last week, the government failed to exclude a Nigerian extremist who came to speak in London. Okay, I understand, I, so Jonathan, I understand your point. On terrorism Don, and Don, Don, is Ajma, Ajma is painting right. a very big picture of the Muslim community in this country. No, he's, he's no, talking about he's, terrorists. He's terror. talking about, about terrorists. Terror. Terror. Will you allow me to finish my sentence? You've got, this bad, his words. No, you have got this bad habit of interfering no, in people's... You're twisting his words. Let me finish my sentence. He talks about terrorists. Will you allow me or you me to just say quiet? Come on. No, allow me to say what I'm saying. He's making, a, he, he's painting a very bad picture of all Muslims, almost, it seems like. That's how the perception is, and I have a valid reason to believe that. Look, as far as we're concerned, we all agree, the vast majority of the Muslims that we know, 99.99% of the people of this country, Muslims or anyone else, would say the same thing, and that is terrorism is rotten. Those mm -hmm. who uh, justify it with anything, they're deluded. Mm -hmm. How do we deal with them? We have two choices. Banish them, destroy them, kill them, obliterate them from the face of this earth. That's one choice. The other is win them over. If we want to win them over, we need to provide an alternative narrative. Alternative narrative must be a narrative of inclusion. Alternative narrative must be an, uh, a narrative that contains can, can equality we, can and just, fairness. Can I now, uh, now no, say no, something? Finished it. Terry, uh, they, they, they say what Terry, their aims are. Not finished it. Uh, are you Terry, a, a Terry, worldwide Terry, I've not finished, yes. finished it. Terry, I've not finished it. <laughs> Well. And we need to include a narrative that is fair and just, even in our foreign policies. Taj Haji is, a, is an imam. Taj, how hard should we be on the extremists? 
I think what's important to realize that you know most of the mosques in, in this country, they are either Wahhabi or Salafi, Ikhwani or Diabandi, and you speak himself, you know, with this Imam, he, he's also representative of that kind of ideology. They believe in burqas and beards, they believe in Sharia and separation, and they don't actually say that theology is a large, large part of the problem. It's, yes, it's fine, to, and I reject the biased Western foreign policy, and that and we should say that loud and clearly, but it's also the issue of theology. We have a medieval theology that is uh, homophobic, that is uh, patriarchal, that's misogynist, uh, and, and teaches separation and isolation. And so when we have the mosque, 2,000 up and down this country, day in, day out, week in, week out, spouting this kind of rhetoric, and this, uh, this rhetoric is coming from imported imams as well as their local counterparts. Uh, so we I have a, a real a problem here, that, you know, we have a, the a theology made in the past, not on the Quran, made on the Hadith, made on uh, all kinds of traditions oh, that has no theological justification uh, whatsoever. And he's speaking I, I as a Muslim. I don't recognize what Taj is talking about the 2,000 mosques in this country. I'm an imam. Mm -hmm. I have connections with four mosques where I lead Friday prayers mm -hmm. and a rota. Um, if you ask Taj how many people actually come to his so-called mosque, probably be more noble than 10. So if we were going by numbers, as he was saying, 2,000, mosques are day in and day out preaching hate, etc. I don't think that's fair, and I don't think that's true. If there are a small number of people who are hell-bent in destroying our community, who have misunderstood their faith, we need to deal with them. Terry and Anne. Right, right, can, can I the say briefly, right, right, we're talking theology. Now, uh, I don't agree, you know, with, let's say, the, the views of the Zionist who is on, i.e., in terms of his own politics. But what he's talking about is a faith-based death cult. Mm. You're talking about... Uh, you know, I don't remember the last time a Zionist threw acid in a girl's face for not wearing a, a veil. Yeah. I agree with you. I don't, I, don't, I don't remember. You know, so, so what we're talking about is these people, you can't, you can't actually deal with them. Their aims, Al-Qaeda, is a worldwide caliphate. They say it in black and white. We can't, you know, to actually say is it our fault that we bring it on ourselves is like us having a discussion here about battered wives yeah. and two, two women sitting there with their faces covered in bruises and saying, well, listen, love, don't a you think you must have asked for it? And I want to put a couple of e emails of on this. Roz yes. says lots of sides contribute to the development of terrorism. So, yes, we are partly responsible. However, the way forward is through talk, mm -hmm. and the people who are chiefly responsible yeah, are those who believe that fighting is the only way. George, I am appalled at the suggestion we have in any way brought terrorism upon ourselves. And Mayank says, I don't think we should be holding ourselves for responsible for Islamic fundamentalism. Religious bigotry and the terrorism that stems directly from its cortex is the issue here. It's the worst the sort of hand-wringing liberalism you can get. Misunderstanding of the cortex or by people. It's not, I follow the Wait, cortex. Okay. Mm -hmm. Do I look like a terrorist to you? Do well, I behave? Well, you're, you're an imam, right? You're talking to a member of Al-Qaeda. He is home. stating that he wants a world world worldwide caliphate, he wants all women, uh, and all women veiled. Who am I talking to? The, these are the Al-Qaeda uh, people, so, uh, the terrorists. So, so how, do, how on earth do you talk to him? Would you like me to answer He's, that? He yes, thinks Terry, that Terry, we're running out of time. Would you like me to answer yeah. that? You simply to... say to Al-Qaeda guy that you've misunderstood Islam completely because God says in the Quran, if you kill one person, it is taking the life of the whole of humanity. Yeah, but, but these, no, these no, Terry, I need to stop you there. It's a neurosurgeon. Terry, I need to stop you there. And one very, very brief point, please. One very brief point is that in a lot of these faith schools which are Muslim, the science teaching is ridiculous because, for example, they're told that Muhammad said that salt doesn't mix okay. with water. Well, that's that's another, I know, no, but the point they are okay. told and, it's, no. and it's not directly linked. <laughs> they okay. have been okay. told and that. And 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 story. No, Thank I've okay. seen it. There we can, and we can continue that debate on our website. We have to end it there because the result of our text poll is in. You've been voting while we have been on air. We asked, should we still pay people?